Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, in this uh, lecture, we are going to discuss about the trajectory planning for uh, any robotic system. So, first we have to define uh, differentiate between the path and trajectory. Basically, the <coughs> path is the geometry that the robot end effector should follow the geometric path that the uh, end effector should follow. So for example, this is the end effector and it has to move from point A to B and to C. So then this is basically the path. Um, and, for, and on the other hand, trajectory is basically a time history of position, velocity and acceleration of each degrees of freedom of the robot. So that means uh, for if your robot is a six degrees of freedom, so every motors or degrees of freedom, time history of position, velocity and acceleration is basically the trajectory, which we have already discussed in the earlier lectures. Now, uh, a path can be a different way you can achieve the path and trajectory. Uh, let's discuss few uh, methods. For example, um, a, a point A uh, for a particular uh, robot position is alpha uh, 2 degree of planar robot. It is alpha is 20 degree and beta is 30 degree. And for the point B in Cartesian space, it is 40 degree and uh, beta equals 80 degree. And maximum angular velocity is uh, given for each of the motor is 10 degrees per second. Now, one way of doing the trajectory planning is to give the maximum velocity for both the joints. So in that case, this robot will move uh, something like this, uh, as you can see uh, here. For example, uh, it will be initially, it will be uh, zero at second, it will be initial point uh, 20 and 30, and then it will move 30, 40, because you're giving in every second 10 degree, and then 40, 50, but then 40 means it alpha has already reached its position, so alpha is not going to move anymore, so this link will be uh, stopped, and the other link will move to complete the position from moving from point A to B in Cartesian space. And this is um, not a very uh, smart way of uh, programming or designing the robot trajectory. Uh, so this is uh, seldom used. And then another method is basically when you want to uh, ensure that both the joint reaches to its extreme, uh, the end point at the same time. So in that case, you uh, you divide the div uh, division in a nonlinear method. So it is four degree and ten degree, and then you can see they start and stop at the same time. So this is one way of achieving uh, this trajectory. But the best way is if you want to move from point A to B in a linear uh, interpolation method. So you want to basically move from A to B in a linear uh, line, a uh, single linear line then basically you have to uh, interpolate uh, the points in between and accordingly you have to find out the by using the inverse kinematics the corresponding alpha beta for this particular two degree of planar robot and then you can also uh, do the uh, movement now this is uh, the uh, the most popular way of achieving the uh, robot movement from one point to another point using linear interpolation. And uh, sometimes if you want to uh, do the uh, during the initial acceleration and initial uh, the the deceleration stage, you seg you you do the segmentation in different way, nonlinear way. So therefore, uh, basically um, not proportionate, you can see. So here you have smaller segments, here you have a smaller segment when you have the cruising velocity, you achieve the cruising velocity, then you can move at a larger <coughs> segment. So this is also another strategy. So now let's see how we can use this trajectory planning for our um, problem solving problems. Uh, okay, so this is the different, as I have mentioned. Okay, now let's say, uh, as I have mentioned, the uh, trajectory is basically in the, is every degrees of freedom will have is uh, time dependent position, velocity and acceleration. So that is what we want to see for trajectory. So let's say it is the position, then you have the velocity, then you may have the acceleration. So these are the, and then you can also have the jerk, which is rate of change of the acceleration. 
but in our course we are going to stuck uh, stick only until the acceleration so now how uh, should we uh, do this thing let's say uh, for example you want to move from this point to this point at a certain of course you need to have a certain time that you want to finish this path movement so from there you get the position for each segment and you also have the velocity for each of the uh, uh, points like point 0.2 point 0.3 point 0.4 and point 0.5 point 0.6 and then basically once you have the uh, one, point 0.1 and point 0.2 the initial position final position initial velocity final velocity you have four boundary conditions and these four boundary condition you can use to come up with an equation to solve an equation uh, so polynomial equation basically to interpolate uh, the required uh, speed uh, position and velocity uh, speed uh, velocity uh, speed uh, position and acceleration uh, for points in between one to two one to two then two to three then three to four four to five five to six then you can get the equations for each of the segments so basically what should be the uh, required uh, position uh, theta theta dot and theta double dot so let's see how to uh, approach to this type of problem for example so you have um, move a single revolute joint uh, from a particular um, point a to from point a to point b uh, which starts at theta 0 and final is theta f so your boundary condition as I've mentioned will be given so theta 0 theta f and it can be initial velocity can be 0 final velocity can be 0 let's say it is not always the case for example in um, the other uh, one that uh, I have shown it is uh, basically in between you may have different velocity and different um, uh, initial velocity and final velocity may not be the 0 so then what we can do, we can do a third order polynomial to come up with theta t. So we get c0 plus c1t plus c2t2 squared plus c3t2 to the power cube. And then t is basically a time. Uh, so you can get then uh, this c0, c1, c2, and c3 are the four unknowns. And you have four boundary conditions. So you can basically have this uh, thing uh, solved. So basically you have to first get the theta dot as well because you need to have theta dot so uh, if you get theta dot then it will be basically uh, c1 plus 2 c2 and plus 2 3 c3 t square and then you put the boundary conditions then basically you have four equations you will have four equations theta at the initial theta at the, to the, the final and theta dot at the initial theta dot at the final and by solving all these equations you can basically find out that c0 c1 c2 and c3 and then you have basically the equations from point a to point b for a particular revolute joint now um, in the case let's say we do a numerical problem where you have uh, theta ti equals to 30 degree at t equals to 0 second and theta tf is 75 degree where t equals to 5 second and initial uh, velocity is 0 and final velocity is 0 which is very simple problem but in real life it not, may not be the case initial velocity is not 0 and final velocity is also not 0 uh, because it is more applicable when you do a continuous uh, path uh, analysis then you will have that at different segments your velocity will be different so you have to do accordingly so then you just uh, get the four equations uh, theta theta dot uh, for initial and final so you will have these four equations and by solving these four equations and basically you will get this c0 c1 c2 and c3 and now is if you put all these things this is basically the position equation for particular uh, case where you are moving the joint from 30 degree to 75 degree and then you can have the theta dot as well so the theta dot is uh, basically if you do the theta dot it is c1 plus 2 c2 t plus 3 c3 t square where you can uh, put the c1 c2 and c3 and you can have the theta dot you can have theta double dot as well which would be basically um, uh, 
uh, C2T. So it would be basically, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, C2, 2C2T, two so basically 2C2 plus 6 uh, C3 T squared. And from there, you will get basically the acceleration equation. And if you plot this one for, let's say, t equals to 1, 3, and 4 seconds, uh, if you want to plot, so you can do it for t equals to 0 to 4 seconds, then you will basically have this. Uh, so these are the three. Oh, sorry, my uh, it was wrong. Uh, so basically, these are the value. These are the correct uh, answer for. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it, I think it, I was correct. So this is C0, C1, C2. Uh, or may, no, or maybe yeah, C, C1, C2, C3. Sorry, C1, C2, C3. And then you will get these uh, values for theta equals t equals to one, three, and four. The position, position, position. You can actually plot it if you want. Let me see. Yeah, you can basically plot this thing from 0 to 5. And in the exam, you will be asked to do this plotting. And then you can see here the velocity, uh, the position moves from here, uh, goes up from 30 to 75. And then velocity goes up and then goes to 0. And the acceleration from acceleration to deceleration. So this is how the system works. So hope you have understood this uh, short lecture on the trajectory planning. If there is any question, feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.